Welcome to I Love Stocks. I'm Washboard Jim. I'm a technical trader that has a strategy of buying at support and selling at resistance. So it's got two stocks I want to talk about today, and that's going to be the apparel sector, and it's going to be Nike and Lulu. Nike versus Lulu. Which one do I prefer the most when it comes to trading? I preferably like Lulu, but they both have nice little swings and nice little runs. Last time I called Lulu, it was down at support, and we bounced up off that support. I ran it up, and then she now she's starting to pull back again. Nike, I'm going to take a look at also. But I want to give you my reasons why I like Lulu over Nike right now. And that's because, and first we're just going to, you know, the websites. I can take you to the websites. This is Lulu Lim's website. They've done very good on their digital sales up on uh, the internet. Online sales have been wonderful. They've almost doubled. And we're going to go ahead and talk about that right now. Lulu Lemon is thriving. I like that headline. Thriving. That's that's a, that's a headline that catches my attention. Lulu is more expensive than Nike. We do know that. As you can check them on the website and check out the pricing. But they're more of a high-end high end kind of uh, apparel. For the luxury, sometimes it's, you know, it's a status quo. Someone likes, you know, the status, you know, hey, I got Lulu on. Yes, I wear Lulu. So, I watch Lulu. I've been watching Lulu for a long time, for about three years. And I really, and it's just had a wonderful run. So, the the most, the company's sales grew by 22% in profit. You know, that's by nearly 15% despite the similar pandemic pandemic related retail restrictions that hurt Nike's operations. The CFO Megan Frank directly, you know, attributed the company's growth to increased traffic of Lulu's digital operations, which I'm very impressed. You know, the clothing company's direct sales, which include digital sales, would uh, now make up 42% of the total revenue of 26 just last year. So that's almost doubled. You know, it's clearly understandable that Lulu focus on the shift of rapid growth due to the COVID-19, and it's paying off. So sales are getting better. People are uh, staying home, exercising more. It's a uh, stay-at-home clothing. You know, you don't have to go out and dress up and go to work. People are, are just buying Lulus, and they're more comfortable. You know, you can be sitting at a desk doing your work. You hardly know you have anything on. So that's one reason why I like Lulu over Nike. Now, let's talk about Nike a little bit in comparison. You know, I like Nike too. Uh, I'm not much of wearing their shoes, but I do like Nike. And there's a couple reasons why I, there's reasons why I'm kind of down on Nike over Lulu because they're a little bit too much into politics. And I'm not one that likes a company that dwells in politics. So that's only downfall that I have. And that's my own personal opinion. That's my own personal opinion when it comes to my strategy of trading. And so I tried to avoid it. But if there's bounces and I can buy it at support, I'm going to take the trade. And we're going to go ahead and look at that right now. Nike, you know. Nike has a promising transition too. It's just not as good because they've had to deal with their brick and mortar stores. So the most Nike recent quarter grew by 9% and earnings up 11%, both year over year. On the surface, this growth seems somewhat modest, and that's true compared to what we're hearing with Lulu, thriving. So modest and thriving, put them two together. When considering many of Nike's uh, wholesale partners, department stores, and operating under capacity restrictions or closed altogether, the growth becomes much more impressive because of their digital sales. Nike's digital sales grew by 84% year over year. And that's expected because of the pandemic. Powered by triple growth in North America that outsize expansions more than often than uh, paying Nike experience from restrictions of wholesalers into the brick and mortar stores. So they had to come up with a way to make money and they just weren't doing it in brick and mortar. People don't want to get out anymore, but it's the same kind of thing. It's an apparel company. It, they're comfortable clothes. You can work from home in them, 
And I think that's going to be the new gig economy in the upcoming years. There's going to be a lot more people working for home. And there's going to be a lot of entrepreneurs that have, like I, I've, I used to be an artist. I, so I got into picture framing. I was a custom picture framing in a brick and mortar and also at home. I would travel to people's houses and build their picture frames right in front of them. And that was a pretty good little sales pitch. Because people like to experience, you know, um, you doing the work. And I also, when I had my frame shop, I used to have little classes where I'd teach people how to picture frame. So it, it was a, and you got to find ways to, to accommodate. And I think both Lulu and Nike have done very well in the uh, digital sales. So let's go ahead and go straight into the charts. Now we're going to look at Lulu first. We're going to look at the 200. I got two different kind of charts. Now I'm a technical trader that has a philosophy of buying at support and selling at resistance. I like to play off chart patterns and candlestick patterns. I like to buy at support and again sell at resistance. And I usually have an entry and an exit plan. My uh, strategy is called the extended trend line pattern. And I've developed it over 16 years. So this is my SMA chart with a 200 and the 50. As you see, when we had the golden cross, we had the nice little bounce. And this was back during COVID, when at first of the year, when that first started. So we've had a trend line right here, and this is where I called the trade last time. Once we hit down here, this bottom down here, then we had a nice little four-day run. Well, now we're seeing the same kind of uh, pullback. We've had a four-day pullback and a little bit of judgment right here. So we could maybe drop down to this bottom line support. But I'm thinking that we're, we just got an upgrade from Morgan Stanley to 186, I think. Let me see here. Morgan Stanley upgrades it to 381, 186 from 356. And that's where we are right now. So you're going to have buyers start to come back into this trade. Let's try to find some resistance levels and some support levels. Now I'm going to go to the top of these last little ones right here. And we're going to draw a support line. And I'm going to see how far it can go over here. So I'm looking at right here, right now. I'm looking at this little level right here, and I'm going to magnify these two up. And I'm going to draw a trend line right on both of these candles. And then we're going to go ahead and magnify this back down. See if I missed anything in here. And we've got a little pivot point area. I'm going to go in between right in here where we had this double top. So let's go ahead and draw that in. That's going to be right about in here at the 356 and that's about where they called that trade out Morgan Stanley and then bottom line support is going to be that next candle down here right around the 349.57 area and I can see that with this candlestick and this candlestick when I'm drawing these extended trend lines I use the bodies of the candles okay I use the body and you see it lines up pretty much with that and we're going to keep it just like that so this brings us down to the 20 day now and we're doing Lulu where I think the pullbacks could be, and there's going to be another one right in here. I'm going with the top of this candle, and the bottom of this, and the bottom of this. It's pretty solid. That's going to be a pivot point. We're going to go ahead and draw that in here with red, and that's going to be my little pivot point area in the channel. We're going to OK this. And then we're going to try to find a resistance level. Now you can see this had a real nice run from my call down here off this trend line. And it could pull back to that trend line right there. But I think with the upgrade, we're going to see a reversal on it. And we're going to probably get back to this 200 on the 20 day. And we'll see what that 200 lines up with. We want to go ahead and put a resistance line right here at the bottom of this. And then we're going to put another one right in here. I'd say um, we've got a quite, a, quite a good ways to run. This thing can run 10, 15 bucks easily easily i think we could take it easily to 369 we had a real nice sell-off here seems like it needed one more and that's what we got the next day so i'm going to be looking at this for a reversal back up i want to hit resistance level i'd like to break this this number right in here right at 36202 so i'm going to put put me a little line in here I want to remember this number here. We're going to put that in red. Take this off. 
brighten it up a little bit. Bam. 36183 is going to be the resistance to break. If we can break past that, we'll get it back up here to 36469. And then you got another one right here at 36662. And then hard resistance to break here at 369. And this thing can run on up to a top level. And I would love to see that 380. That's what we saw last time. I got out of the trade way too soon. Last time when it hit the 200, that's when I got out. So we also use that as a resistance line at 366.71. And I'm going to keep a good eye on this. And I'm going to call this out one more time. Solid support here at 354.29 with an upgrade that Morgan Stanley gave it to it to 386, if I remember, or 385. i got to get that number in my head so I can remember. 381. 381. Let me see here. Yeah, see, it goes right up to my 381 right up here. And I can see that. So let's look at it again. 354.29 with a hard resistance to break at 361.83 up to 369.20. And if we, or 366.62, I want to look at this one right here. This channel right in here. With a long of 380.70. And I would probably take my profit. I'm going to buy a few contracts of this today. And what am I going to be looking at? It's a good question. So we've got two opportunities here. We've got the December 31st for a scout play. I think it could probably, I would probably go without that one. And I would move maybe to the January 8th. And I'd be looking at the 380 strike. And I want to check out the delta at the time and see where the delta is. Maybe I want to raise it up a little bit higher, bar on it, and bring it up here to right around in the money part. Maybe take it right at 360 and swing it on up. And I think this could probably go to 1,000, maybe to 1,100. Or I'm going to be looking at the, the January 15 call. And I'm going to be looking at the 380 here between 570 and 600. And we'll see how the market opens. And that's how I'll take the trade. And that's on the January 15, 2021. So let's go ahead and look at the next trade. And that's going to be Nike. You know, I'm not as bullish on Nike. But Nike, you can, does have some good playable opportunities. I'm going to pull up the yearly chart on it. Whoops, that's not Nike. That's Dinky. <laughs> dinky. Okay. Time for my morning coffee again. Damn, Jim, get it right. Okay, Nike, let's take this to the year. We've got some divergence going on. Let's go ahead and check it out. Let's pull up the year. I've got two trend lines on this one here. It's kind of just undecisive on the first one. It's kind of found a little pivot point in both of them. Then I've got the low, low support down here right around this area right here at 134.49. How did I come across this? I take the bottom of this candlestick and I go to the bottom of the body of that candlestick. Same thing here. I just kind of went from the wicks on this one here, hit the wick, and she lined up right into the middle of that. And we did kind of close down to that with the bearish candle. That is bearish to me. But we did close at a high. No, we closed here at 141.76. So let's take a look at this on the uh, 20 yearly. You know, let's keep it up here on the year. I'm going to draw a few trend lines in here. Nike's had a wonderful run. I mean, down here to under 100 bucks was a good buy. You can see it's not as high. That's because of the P.E. ratio. So we're going to go ahead and put us a trend line right here at, like I said, I'm a technical trader, not a fundamental trader. I like to play the technical side of the of the chart. And I'm drawing little areas where I think support could be. I mean, this is a choppy stock to me. So we've got one right here. Right there. And then right down here. And then we closed up here at 143. We're going to bring this up to the 20-day now. We have a descending pattern. That's descending. Pennant flag, inverse descending pat. I mean, a, a, a bearish descending pattern. So I think this thing could pull back to this trend line right here. 
And I'm going to put a little, let me see, I'm going to put one right in here. See this high we've had right in here? How it lines up with this? How it kind of lines up with that? We're going to put that right in here. That's going to be one support, then another one right down here. So we got a little channel. I'm kind of looking at this, and I'm thinking this should be a solid support. So I'm going to call this area the first one. We're going to turn that into red. I've done over a million charts, over one million. So I can look at them right off the bat and say if I want to take the trade, if I like to trade, if I don't like to trade, and then I move on to another trade. But that's going to be our bottom line low support, I think, here at 139. I like to see that hold. Then you've got another one. Right in here, we're going to take this top and see where that runs. That runs right into about where she closed at, 141.79, 141.76. That's going to be your first, second, third support with a strong buy right down here at 139.02 with a resistance to break, and that's going to be right up here right around the 145. That's going to be a hard resistance, so remember that if you take the trade, if she does decide to reverse up. So far, the 50 SMA says, yes, it can reverse. But maybe I want to take it down here to this 200 and have a little patience with it. So I'm going to set me an alert. I want to get in here right about at this top right here. And I'm going to set an alert so I know when the trade's going to be ready. Where's my alert here? We'll set it at the ask and below. And that's my alert. In case it does pull back. I'm going to be ready to get into the trade here at 140.10, or I'll watch the price action. It's always price over volume, and see if it kind of pulls back a little bit for a strong buy at 139.02. I like Nike, but I don't like it as much as I do Lulu. That's what I want to keep emphasizing in this video. So let's have a good day trading stocks. You always know I love stocks. We do have links over here on the side. Please sign up to all three of our little pages. we got Twitter. Hit that follow button. Miss Vegas is posting alerts in here all the time. And can't argue about that. And then we've got on our website our StockTwits account. A, B, and B, spinning top bearish. I posted this in here the other day. I kind of like it. That means it's going to have another pullback, then maybe take the retracement back up. But I post alerts in here, hit that follow button, so is Miss Vegas. She has hers right here. Also, please, if you get time, hit that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for future updates. We do appreciate that. Always remember, I love stocks.